As a DoorDash Dasher, the company just changed the screen that you see every single time when you're out there dashing. That's the order request screen. And again, it's new. So some marketplaces just saw it last week. Yes, some marketplaces saw it a month or so ago, but it's new. Er. Ish. All right, regardless when you actually got the screen though, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for as a DoorDash Dasher in just the 45 seconds that the company gives you to make a decision if this order is worth it. By the way, this is the first time you and I are meeting. My name is Mike. I've done DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Amazon, Walmart, most every single app and niche that you can think of. And for food delivery, if you just want the shortcut, I made a course for you. It's called Mastering Delivery. It's going to go over setting up your car, bonus pay, positioning, strategies with hotspots, what we call power strips, managing your time, and what I think is most valuable or one of the most valuable is going over the actual numbers of your side hustle to make sure it's actually worth it. Check it out. It's linked down below. Now, I did a video completely breaking down what's old and what's changed and new so you know the actual changes. I want you to watch that video. It's linked on the pinned comment as well. Watch that after this one. But here's generally what the old screen looks like and the new screen. Now, the thing is, we've seen this old screen for years, as long as I can remember. Comment down below, when was the old screen, I guess, not the old screen? Because I remember it for like four, five, seven, I don't know, six years, as long as I can remember. Number one, which is new and updated for 2023, in my opinion, is my eyes drawn to this first, the actual colorway of pick up or shop. Because if it's a shop and deliver like the Dollar General, the Targets, what have you, it's gonna be blue, it says shop for items. So the first thing, because maybe I don't wanna do shop and deliver. So if I see a blue colorway, it doesn't really matter the payouts, I'm not gonna take it. So $3.50, I'll tell you what, comment down below if you agree, I don't care what the miles are. On $3.50 for me personally, I wouldn't take it. I don't care if it's a mile or even 0.75 miles, something like that. My minimum really for myself and you is $6. If it's dead slow and there's no bonus pay, you're going to see like five, 525, 550. That's up to you, but I really want $6 payouts and a $1.75 paid up per mile. Now, new for this new screen is it just says guaranteed. So keep that in mind as well. So the total might be higher because it's not showing the included customer tip. I would say 80 to 90% of at least my food delivery customers leave a tip. Comment down below what your marketplace tip frequency is. I mean, I want you to be at like at least 60% of your customers leaving your tip. Next, the miles. So 2.8 miles in this example here. So here Here's where we calculate the dollars to mile ratio. How much am I getting paid for the miles driven? Because every year, the IRS here in the US gives you a standard optional mileage deduction, which encompasses the general business operating cost of a vehicle. If you're only making like 80 cents a dollar per mile, there's not a lot of margin there on that vehicle. Actually, let me show you another example that does have a better dollar to mile ratio. So $9.50 here guaranteed, that is before hopefully that customer tip five miles. So a little bit better here on the dollar to mile ratio, really close actually to $2 a mile. Next, I will look at the restaurant. And I mean, this all happens kind of at once. It certainly blends in together because if you're looking at that colorway thing where it says pickup, I mean, the restaurant's right there. So you're going to probably see it as well. So it's not a definite order. Like you have to do this because your eyes going to wander and look at stuff. So now the restaurant is Taco Bell. So let's round up. Let's assume this is $2 a mile. That's very good and the pay is good and hopefully it should be even higher with a customer tip that's very good but the restaurant taco bell would this roadblock you right here and would you ignore it just because it's taco bell sometimes it will stop me if it's a very tight dollars to mile like a dollar 50 which isn't stellar and it's mcdonald's it is a taco bell then i'm thinking well i've had a lot of problems there wait times drive throughs etc depending on the restaurant hours as well now this one I would accept it. You get an idea of, okay, well, this Taco Bell usually isn't that busy versus this one. We have one right by the casino here. There's not 
too much else. That might be a little busier. <laughs> I'm thinking of a Wendy's here in like the Bloomfield area. It's like the only, well, one of the only fast food. That place is always slammed. Doesn't really matter the time of day. So next we have the pickup. We had the pay. We had the miles. We had the restaurant. Now I'm looking at positioning. So let me get you another example here. Now here's a stacked order. So a stacked order is two or more assignments for one driver. Look at the same things that we went over here. It's a standard pickup. You have the restaurant names, the miles and the pay. That's a good dollar to mile ratio. Why is positioning important? Because look at this example here. So the two house icons, obviously those are the two customers. Now in this example, they're pretty close together. So it really doesn't matter here for positioning. We're pretty close by versus this one. Now this is on the old screen. It uses new verbiage insofar as not showing the expected tip, but you can ignore the other stuff here. I just want to show you the positioning here. So look at this, the pickup with the shopping bag is right in a busy area, the city central, maybe a little bit of the east end of the city here, but it's not awful, but it's taken me super far, 11 miles to be exact, 11.8 down south, way out of the center of Pittsburgh here. So then I would understand positioning wise, how easy is it going to be for me to get an order in that ending destination 11 miles south of the city? Now, yes, you can get orders down there. And even you might just live down there and you're saying, I'm not going to drive 20 minutes into my city center. It's too busy up there. Parking's tough. And I'm, I'm just going to stay in my suburban zone. That's fine. But if you're driving in suburban zones, it stands the reason. I'm sure you know this. It's more spread out. The power strips that we call it, those are areas that are really dense with restaurants, you know, plazas, little strips, what have you, mall areas. It's going to be, yeah, further and far between, and it's going to be less dense versus like just tons of shops, what have you usually in your city center. So I hope you're ready at this point to go over some order requests in real time, just 45 seconds with me going over, is the order worth it? And now the timer on this new update is buried in the same color way. Well, it's white, but there's no standouts in the accept button as well. Now, if these orders don't make sense, click the decline button. It's on the top right. You can click decline as much as you want. You can have a zero or 1% acceptance rate. You cannot be deactivated at the time of filming this video for having too low of an acceptance rate. All right, we're online and go. So 350, it's a food delivery at that Chula Indian barbecue, 2.8 miles. This is what I'm thinking in real time here. Let's look at the position here. It's taking me, okay, the ending destinations in a busy area. I don't mind that at all, but the pay I mean, that pays way too low. So I'm going to do this, click the decline button. We're going to click decline again because it doesn't really matter. And then I would usually recommend marking the order is too small. Now, I've never read anything from DoorDash that says if you click the order is too small, as in you're not getting paid enough that they would actually give you a higher paying orders. But that is always still what I'd recommend that you click there. Now, obviously, if something else pertains to the reason that you're declining that order, you can click on that as well. And here we go. So it is a pickup, a stacked order. I see both locations. The pickup are in order of the pickup. It's 1150, which is really good. So five miles, which is a nice dollar smell. That's over $2 a mile. And let's look at the ending destination. Now for me, if I'm in Pittsburgh, I don't love that ending destination. It does pull me a little bit away a little bit more eastward, I should say, of my busy zone, my power strips here. Now this one, I think we could take. Now notice with this stacked order, we actually get 90 seconds. So 45 seconds per request here. So a stacked order, in my opinion, you're gonna have plenty of time to make an educated decision here. I would just say, again, look at the restaurant pickups here. Are the restaurants gonna give you a hard time? These ones get loaded, I'm not really familiar with that location. And then the Permanis, I am, but it's a busier restaurant here in Pittsburgh. And then that ending destination, I don't love it, but it's not so far away from power strips that I would always ignore it. I would probably ignore this half the time, but then again, the dollars to mile ratio is pretty good on this one. Now, keep in mind, if you get pulled north, south, wherever, out of your desired zone, sometimes if I'm here in the marketplace, then I might get orders from up here and customers and restaurants up here that's pulling me even further away from my zone, you know, north, south, whichever way it is. But really, this one's not bad. I like it. And what you can always do for positioning wise, if you don't want to be in the fringe there, is you can pause your dash. You got 35 minutes 
pause your dash, just take the time to drive back into a power strip that you like. I wanted to give you some examples of other order types because what we're following here on the channel in 2023, definitely subscribe if you wanna be in the know on how to make the most money on most every single side hustle, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. But we're following grocery runs and any type of non-food order type like Dash Mart's convenience runs. So let me show you an example of this in real time. So this one, 1975 guaranteed for just 1.8 miles. That is an astounding dollars to mile ratio. First thing I think of. The target, it's grocery. Okay, I saw that in the blue color way. Gotta have your red card because obviously that's how you pay for it. Now, the target, I know that place gets swamped. <laughs> it's got underground, well, underneath parking, whatever you want to call it, beneath the store. And it can get very busy, but... I'm only shopping for 11 items. So as long as you're comfortable going there, parking, going into the store, grabbing the cart, following that grocery list, substituting any items, by the way, that aren't available or out of stock, then you gotta put a timeout into your shopping. You gotta call or text a customer. It's gonna take some time there. Time is money, very literally in this case for you. So another type of shop and deliver here, just the convenience items, pretty similar to the grocery. All right. Dollar General, 825, 2.2 miles. That's a good dollars to mile ratio. I take that. It is eight items here. The positioning I don't like, but look at that. It's not too far away as far as positioning. And a Dollar General, it's a smaller store. It's not as massive as the Target. So I should be able to do it faster if I'm not wandering around the store here. And it's eight items. So it's not bad. I'm not a huge fan of the shop and deliver just because of potential roadblocks of things out of stock but I feel like convenience items might be more in stock than grocery items. Now you do have to use the red card, of course, to pay, which is pre-authorized. So you don't have to worry about like loading any funds. DoorDash does that. But I've also had problems multiple times where the red card on a shop and deliver got declined. <laughs> so you had to get in touch with the DoorDash support. And I've even had times where they could not even fix the pre-authorized account. So I had to use my own funds and then you contact support to get immediately granted, immediately reimbursed, but uh, more potential roadblocks on shopping gigs. It doesn't mean they're all bad though. So comment your thoughts on shopping gigs below. Now, keep in mind, this just goes over the 45 seconds you have to make a decision, to decide if it's worth it, what I look for, in what order. It doesn't go over the actual changes of what's been added to this new screen, moved, etc. So if you do want to see that, click or tap the screen right here to see that complete walkthrough of that new versus old screen. And do check out that mastering delivery course because this also doesn't go over those best practices, specifically the finances where you and I will go over a complete spreadsheet. Again, drop a like on this video and I'll see you in the next one.